I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some halal fun. Uh, you know, uh, like uh, there is something here in front of me is annoying me. Uh, it's a mosquito. And uh, I think the reason they call her a mosquito because she is originally from Japan. You know, like Miss, you know, Kito. But the funny is that the Muslims even they make from the mosquito a story. If you go and search in the Quran, you will find a verse speaking about a mosquito. Now, a mosquito is not like Miss Julia or Miss uh, uh, whatever Miss. You know, mosquito is different in the Quran. You know, the Quran. You know that God, Allah. Speaking about mosquitoes, so he has something very valuable. And as usual, Muhammad, you know, uh, he is very smart, and Muslims are even smarter. And imagine how smart is Allah. I mean, Allah is the vendor, not only for, you know, long penis and a lot of vagina, but, you know, he vendor intelligence. And today we'll prove to you that Allah has zero. So if you are a Muhammad and you would like to join us, please feel free, you can text me in Skype. And I will be happy to take you. Uh, just maintain your mouth, speak nicely, and you will be more than welcome. You speak rude, I will whip the floor with you. You know me. Uh, if we go in the in the in the internet, internet, I, I will do this. Just hold. Give me a second. Actually, I wasn't thinking about talking about this uh, topic, but the mosquito just jumped in front of me. I mean, that's it, you know, spring is coming, so now we've had a mosquito, which is weird, because, you know, they come in so early. Uh, and usually they don't get inside the house, but anyway, I guess I'm lucky today. Uh, what Allah, I will type, what Allah said about mosquito. <laughs> Example of the mosquito in the Quran. <laughs> but you know, things can go really wild and crazy uh, with the Muhammadan. Uh, suddenly the mosquito become a scientific uh, study, you know, uh, for Muslims. So if we go right now and we type next to this, Allah, what Allah said about mosquitoes, and then we say, uh, uh, on and science. Then we will find <laughs> scientific discovery. <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> you know, sometimes like I don't know. Uh, I you know like I ask myself sometimes questions. I cannot find the answer for them. I mean, do the God has created us stupid, or you know, we choose to be stupid? I mean, what the deal? You know. Anyway, so uh, uh, we go in the Quran, and let us see here. We choose a website. Oh, this one is showing us uh, tons of them. We want only the mosquitoes now. What are the mosquitoes? Uh, I don't see the mosquito. We want the mosquito. Anyway, we can take any of them, but all of them. But let's go to the verse first. Anyway, the Quran says, the following. In chapter 2, verse number 26, the Quran says Allah will not be shy to give an example of a mosquito and what is above it. The Muslims, they come to a conclusion saying that scientific discovery discover that there is some kind of creatures live in the top of the mosquitoes. So Allah is talking about that. But what the Quran is saying that Allah will not give example to talk about something so small, even if it's a mosquito or something bigger. <laughs> but here that will take us to something else. You know, when the Muhammadan, they try to find science in their book and always they fail and we laugh at it. Let us talk about other preacher, Muhammad, he mentioned clearly that there is something there, you know, uh, and that is the fly. The fly, according to Muhammad, if a fly fell down in your soup, you dip it, dip it, dip it, and then you drink it, drink it, drink it. Why? Because there is a disease in one wing, and there is an illness in the other wing. And this is the hadith. If a fly falls into the vessel of one of you, let him dip it. But this is not really the, the, the whole thing. Here is the whole thing. And here we see the intelligence of a prophet Muhammad uh, fly upon him. Abu Huraira reported that Allah Messenger saying, when a fly alights in any one vessel, you know, like, you know, she, she fell in the vessel. He should plunge it in, or plunge it in, uh, and then throw it. Okay, what is, I mean, why I'm going to dip the fly inside my drink or my soup, and then I can throw it away. Why shouldn't I throw it away, and it should, maybe I should not even drink the thing? I mean, I understand that some people, they are born, in a very poor society and they cannot afford to throw the whole thing so maybe uh, you know if i'm a, from a very poor family i will uh, you know get a spoon and i will grab the fly and whatever liquid around it you know uh, before she start dancing around and throw it away and maybe i will boil the food again in order to be sure that it is not you know there's no uh, disease is uh, thrown from the fly inside the soup but Muhammad, he have different idea because Muhammad is super intelligent. And remember, all of this is coming from his God. His God told him this. When a fly alights, a fly jump inside your soup, you dip it inside. Why? Because Muhammad gave you the answer. For there's one wing there have a cure and the other one have a disease. I think this one does not, does not need like an explanation, right? It's very clear. There's one wing carry a disease and the other wing carry an illness. The Muslims, they have videos, we played before, if you remember, about, uh, uh, this is a, a doctor from Gaza. He said that the Catholic Church, they hired two scientists from Germany in order to prove that this is absolutely false. And then, when those Catholic priests, 
and those Catholic uh, scientists from Germany, they study the Hadith in order to prove Islam to be false, not to prove Islam to be good. They were surprised when they found that this is a true. And not only that, they found a cure for AIDS there. Yes, brother. And I shared the video on YouTube and we played it many times. So here we ask ourselves, how come until now we did not have a cure for AIDS? And where is that medicine? He said there is a company, it's called Bayer, and those two scientists, they sold their discovery to Bayer company. And now they are selling every bill for $500. Now, if you go and check with this company, you will find that they don't even make any medicine for AIDS. This is not their field. And here you notice how stupid, how silly the Muhammad. And when they try to make their prophet look like a scientist, when the guy obviously is an idiot. What happened or what happened? People, you know, he was sitting, a fly dump herself inside the soup. Muhammad, because he's a savage, he's a stupid, he keep eating, nothing happened. Prophet, Prophet, there's a fly in your soup. Muhammad is, oh, okay, okay. We'll dip it, dip it, dip it, and throw it away. He said, Prophet, why you did that? He says, because, ah, oh, there is a, you know, there is a, a sickness in one wing, and there is a, a cure in the other wing. And here you notice that according to Muhammad, the fly is carrying the cure and the disease. So shouldn't we eat flies? Now listen carefully. There's a hadith, I just remember it. Mm, let me remember what the hadith is saying. I did not read this hadith for a long time. Uh, I'm trying to grab some of the words because this is, you know, this is how I find the hadith because it's impossible, you know, with those numbers here, it's impossible. Um, what was the hadith? Hold on, hold on. Hmm. I'm trying to remember it. Give me, give me a minute. Hmm. Ah. Just to show you, I just, I just figured out. Ah, here you will see how we give Muhammad a big blow, uh, and how we prove that he's stupid. In different hadith, Muhammad he said, and let me try to find it. I hope we'll find it in English. Um. I'm trying to remember it because you see you have to remember the whole line. I mean it's not easy. There's I mean this guy he keep talking. There's tens of thousands of hadith. Um so you need to remember the whole line in order to find it. But I will try. Um let's see. Um Shifa. Let us see this one. Oh, we could not find it. Okay, let us see something else. Hmm. See, I'm trying to remember it. This is how, you know, the, the information, they come to your brain. I mean, there's information, you put them in the shelf, and they are there for maybe, uh, essentially, as you know, I'm very, very, extremely ancient. Um, so let us see. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, Shane, give me just, uh, be patient with me, because this is very important. Uh, let us see. Here we go, we found it, thank God. But now we found it in Arabic, what is missing is to find it in English. Let's try this. And now you will see with me why we, we consider Muhammad a very stupid idiot. Read carefully with me. Umm Salama narrated, Umm Salama is one of the wives of Muhammad who used to do to her boom boom and the one she have never, never have orgasm if you remember. She narrated saying that Allah Messenger said, Allah did not make 
your cure in what he made haram and lawful to you. So what this hadith is implying, making it clear, that anything Allah he forbid you from eating, obviously there is no cure from it. If we go right now and check in that, that means what well, Muhammad he was right in this field, the fly is not forbidden for Muslims to eat. It's forbidden to eat pork. The fly never mentioned that fly is forbidden for you. <laughs> Some Muslims should have a halal dish. But look what happened now. If we go and search right now, how every surgery is made and how they type up the stitches together, they will find it's made from the tissues of pigs. If we search how the insulin is made, we will find that millions of people who have diabetes, they will die if Mr. Big don't help them. And here you notice that Muhammad right away he proved to us that he is mentally ill. What insulin is made from? Where the, the insulin is coming to us? I'm going to go. There is two kinds of insulin. One is coming from pork and one is coming from beef. But the most popular one and the most useful is the pork one. This is a government, uh, USA government website, have nothing to do with Christianity, have nothing to do with Islam. All right? So like you might say to yourself, well, you know, okay, this is an article made by a Christian prince, maybe. This is FDA, which every Islamic university, every Islamic school, every Islamic government, when they want to check if the medicine is approved or something else, you know, they check the FDA USA government website. So you will find how important the pork is. The pork insulin, insulin is number one resource for saving life of people. But look what the stupid Muhammad said. Allah did not make any cure in something is forbidden for you. Anything is forbidden, there's no cure from it. So what we discover now from the intelligence Muhammad, that what is forbidden is forbidden because simply there's no cure in it. And fly are not forbidden. Cockroaches are not forbidden. Uh, shit is not forbidden and all of this can be cured for you but the one is forbidden is the one has zero cure for you and it is obvious I mean the Muslim they can play games with this as much they want but the hadith is so clear Allah did not make your cure in what he made haram do you see it? So did Muhammad here made a stupid mistake as usual? Obviously he did. It's obvious. Every, every stitches, when you do in a hospital a surgery, let us say, God forbid, you need a surgery. When they cut your skin and they use some kind of fabric, to stitch you up. Do you know it's made from what? Let us go and search in Google. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not a doctor, as you know. Even though I can work as a doctor because I am, uh, I learned from Prophet Muhammad how to be a doctor. Look, you know, <laughs> I'm expert now. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to type here. Let us say, what the stitches made from? Uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what, uh, you know, my English is uh, is limited, so maybe you can help me, guys. Uh, what stitches, fabric made from, maybe? Uh, 
Let us see if Gogo will help me. Okay. Uh, maybe we need to put the word medicine, surgery. I did not put the word surgery. Okay. Made. All right. This is again another website. It's a government website. I have nothing to do with it. It's telling you how this uh, this is you know how uh, they make uh, uh, you know studies and how and why using the the, the pigs is the most suitable for uh, making stitches because simply your body does not reject it. So. You know, you notice here that Muhammad again he made a poopoo, and it is very useful. Pigs are very useful for surgery, for insulin, uh, for recovery. Which, in other way, millions of people they, uh, you know, will die if we don't have Mr. Pig, who is the enemy of Allah, who Allah forbid it. You see, the issue here <coughs> is not Allah is forbidding the pig or eating the pork. You know, we know Muhammad trying to copy the Old Testament, but Muhammad here has given you more details why. He's saying clearly there's no cure from anything Allah he forbid you. And then we find suddenly that Mr. Pig is not only the one who have a cure, actually he is responsible for saving the life of hundreds of millions. How Muslims can explain to us the stupidity of the God of Muhammad and Muhammad? Because remember, Muhammad, he doesn't say all his own things. He claimed that he is receiving this from his God. Do we have any Muhammadan have anything to say? So the Muslim, they make uh, videos about the knowledge of Allah and Allah, how much knowledge he have. And then when the second we start asking the knowledge about, uh, about this God, how much knowledge he have, we will find that his knowledge is not even the knowledge of five years old kid. A five years old kid is a smarter than the one they call him Allah or Muhammad. Prove me wrong. I don't know how many of you, by the way, did uh, save this hadith because this hadith is very important to get them busted. Especially, you know, we just remember it. And by the way, this is Sahih. So they cannot say this is Daif. It says Sahih and Ibn Mas'ud. But Sahahahu, hmm? Sahahahu Ibn Hibban. It is Sahih. So here you will see even it says the graded as Sahih. Because later the Abdul, what the game of the Abdul? Anything is an embarrassment, anything will show that Muhammad is a stupid fool. The Muslim, they will claim it is not accurate. We don't accept it. Do you see it? Do we have any Muslim have any comment, want to say anything? Any Muhammadan? Okay, we continue about the stupidity of the God of Islam. You see, the God of Islam, he's supposedly a person who is very knowledgeable. And the Muslims always, when you say anything to them, they say Allah and his messengers knows best, which means Muslims are mushrikeen. Mushrikeen means somebody associate God with a man. And Muslims are the one who do that because they associate the knowledge of God, their God, not our God, with the knowledge of a man whose name is Muhammad. So if I type now, uh, Allah and his messenger knows best. Allah and his messenger knows best. 
Oh, I'm typing in Arabic. You know, so I hate it when I type in Arabic when I suppose that in English or versus you know the opposite. Uh, Allah and His Messenger knows best. Okay, let us see what we will find. What the Muslims we will find millions of stories about Allah and His Messengers knows best. As an example. Muhammad he was driving his limousine and there is a man sitting behind him. Muhammad he said to the man behind him, do you know where the sun goes during the sunset time? The man he said to him, Allah and his messengers knows best. So here you notice that Muhammad is confirming, he did not say don't say that. He didn't say oh this is my knowledge, I did not, I'm thinking maybe, you know. He agreed, he did not refuse, he loved it actually. And actually, this is the purpose when he say, do you know? So the Muslim would answer says, Allah and his messengers knows best. You know, it, 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 it's a fuel his ego, you know, like he, he loved to be worshipped. He loved to be praised. That's why he changed his name to be the praised one. So Allah and his messenger knows best. And what Allah knows best? That the sun set in a spring of hot water. Then you show the Muslims this hadith, they will say to you, well, this is da'if. And this hadith is reported by a liar. But we read here, it says Sahih in chain by Al Alabani. So simply anything is an embarrassing for the Muhammadan. Anything will make Muhammad stupid, and this is in total agreement with the Quran, where the Quran says the sun set in murky water. But what I find it here more, more embarrassing that when the Muslim they say that they are not pagan and they are not uh, worshipping a man, and then yet they say Allah and his apostle know best. If we ask any Muslim right now, based on what you Muslims claim that Allah and the Apostle, the Apostle knows best, is that a statement mean nothing? Or it's a statement mean a lot? Any Muslim can tell us? Allah and his Apostle knows best, as you see. It's all over. All over. Every single of those it says, Allah and his Apostle know best. Who knows best? Allah. Who else? His apostle. But isn't it Muhammad he learned what he learned from Jibreel? So how Muhammad he know best and Allah only? When Muhammad himself he learned supposedly from Jibreel and Jibreel he learned from Allah. So Jibreel he know best too. He know actually more than Muhammad. And then how someone he knows best, he says such a stupid things, like how the baby is created, how the sun set in the muddy water, a muddy spring, hot spring, uh, all of this Allah knows best. So I'm going to give an opportunity for the Muhammadan. Who is willing to call us and tell us, when Muhammad and Muslims agree that Allah and his apostles know best, are they really saying the truth? Or the truth is that neither Allah, neither Muhammad, neither Muslims know anything, even about their religion. As an example, the hadith in the front of us says, once I was with the Prophet in the mosque, at the time of the sunset, the Prophet said, Abu Dhar, Abu, for those who do not know, mean father. You know, the, the Arab, they have like their own style. So they don't call the name, the person by his name, if you have kids. And sometimes, even if you don't have kids, they call him by a name of a son he will have in the future, which is very funny. So Abu Dhar, Dhar, Dhar mean uh, ants, the father of the ants. Why they call him this way? I have no idea. Do you know where the sun set? I replied, Allah and his apostles knows best. He said, it goes and prostrate underneath Allah's throne. And that is Allah's statement, and the sun runs in, onto its fixed course for a term, decree. This is the Muslim translation. I'm just reading exactly what it says. And that is the decree of Allah Almighty when he said, and that is the all-knowing, chapter 36, verse number 38. 
if Muhammad is confirming the Quran and Muhammad is explaining the Quran, who is here from the Muhammadan agree with Muhammad's statement in the Quran and in the Hadith? Because if this is false, that's mean Muhammad and his God, both of them, they are false. And by the way, happy Easter for those who they are celebrating Easter according to the Orthodox calendar. We wish you the best. Any Muhammadan? Is this a statement is coming from a truthful prophet or he is making things up? Until now, I see no Muslims texting me. No Muslim. Somebody is saying, hey, can I call? You, hey, Why well, you can call? I mean, are you a Muslim? If you are a Muslim, only you can text me, and then I will call you. If you are not, then you cannot. Any Mohammedan? And now you will notice that Mohammedan, they go, they go sleep, you know? But they don't want to talk about this topic. This is embarrassment. Anything is embarrassment, right away they try to avoid it. Islam is based on mockery, and they think they can win an argument by a mockery. But mockery doesn't work for you good. Or this is a mockery. Look at this, this is a mockery. This is a man who is taking advantage of people who are around him who do not know really about anything about the sun movement or the earth movement. So whatever he says is going to be fine. Where Muhammad he got his knowledge, he got it from Allah. Where Allah he got his knowledge from? Obviously he got it from NASA. There are some Muslim videos actually who they try to refute me. They say yes, CP. This hadith is accurate. So they agree with this hadith. <laughs> and suppose they are the liar. So if this hadith is accurate and the Muslims, they agree with it, and this is the interpretation, the perfect interpretation for the Quran, that means all of Islam is a garbage. Because all of us, we knew that this is, I don't want to use the word bull, you know, but this is what it is. Any Muhammadan? Who can give better inter interpretation for the Quran more than Muhammad himself? Anyone? Who is a Muslim can get us busted and show us that we are wrong and Allah is not a stupid? I mean, this hadith alone, by the way, and the Quran with it, the nice thing about this hadith or the important thing about it, it is from Sahih al-Bukhari, which means it's very, very 100% accurate. Secondly, it has two things in the same time. Muhammad talking, explaining the Quran. And look at the name of the chapter. Prophetic commentary on the Quran. Tafsir of the Prophet, peace be upon him. This is not Tafsir Ibn Kathir. This is not Tafsir uh, Ibn Abbas. This is Tafsir, the big Shantir. Who is the one making Tafsir? Muhammad himself. Tafsir of the Prophet. Do you see it, Muslims? You can play the game. You can say Ibn Kathir, he is a man like us. He's trying, he made a mistake. We make a mistake, every human make a mistake, but this is the Prophet himself making tafsir. Who is a Muslim can help me to explain why Muhammad being stupid? Let us see, we have somebody, he claimed to be a Muslim. Let us call him. <clears throat> Let us hope he will answer. And now we will find out if Muhammad really, if Muslims can help him, or maybe Allah can help him.
Hello? 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 Yes, my friend, you are live on air. Are you a Muslim? I am Muslim. All right. Do, are you following our topic? Uh, I just log in. I don't know if um, I think I'm following a bit. So. Well, uh, I will remind you. Here we have a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Your prophet saying that the sun goes every day and sit under the throne of Allah. And this is the interpretation of the verses in the Quran, chapter 36, verse number 38, where it says, and the sun runs into a fixed course for a term between two bracket decree, and that is the decree of Almighty All-Knowing, chapter 36, verse number 38. So this is the interpretation of the Quran by your prophet. What do you say? Can you uh, show me the prophet? Uh... Well, if you have if you have YouTube open, you will see it in the screen. Just be sure, please, that uh, your YouTube is muted, so I don't have double sound. Uh, okay, I think I have multiple sound here. How do you? How do I mute it on the YouTube? Uh, there is a click in YouTube, the speaker, just to mute the speaker. One <clears throat> Still can't find it. There's a there's a speaker sign. Move your mouse over the 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 play or the European video play and you will see I'm just uh, I'm on the phone so it's yeah in the phone in the phone is the same there's a place where you can mute anything you know anyway you can just uh, lower your speaker in the phone and you will hear nothing anyway from your phone you know just lower okay. your speaker in the phone mute it and that will work fine so uh, now do you see the, do you see the hadith now yeah it's on the screen let me have a read of it all right Can you read it for us? So we don't, you know, we're going to go silence. No, I'm I'm reading by myself, so. Right. So what do you say about it? No, you tell What's me. I, mean, what, 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 I don't know. What do you think? Does, do the sun goes every day? Is it how the sun really goes? Do the sun move anywhere? You know, like this is the 24 hours uh, uh, a cycle. And your prophet explained that cycle, claiming that the sun goes. This is during the sunset. So he's claiming that the sun now is going from the east to the west. And where it goes to set, it goes to set and the Allah throne. So according to your prophet here, the sun is the one is moving. It's not the earth going around itself. So do you agree with that? Yeah, whatever the prophet says, that's it. Unless you can prove otherwise. Well, I don't know. What, what is your education, my friend, if you don't mind? Do I know your education, brother? Yeah, I have, uh, you know, the highest degree I got is a master degree. So when you say, if you prove, isn't it now this is like, I mean, you, you go to... If you are uh, in maybe 10 years old in school, they teach you that the sun does not go anywhere. This is this earth going around itself every 24 hours. And this is why what we have, the cycle of this earth moving around itself. And this is why we see the sun coming up or coming down. But in fact, it's not going anywhere. So what do you mean if you prove it to me? Even this one, I need to prove it to you? Hello? So you, Hello? you never learn in the school that the sun does not go anywhere and the sun is, it is the earth is moving around itself. Hello? I'm here, my friend. You hear me? Come on. Don't tell me you don't hear me. Hello? Okay, maybe this guy, he muted me too. 
Wait, my friend, okay, put the speaker on. <laughs> I think he turned off his Wi Fi. Uh, guys, he said, What's wrong with this? What's wrong with this? There's nothing wrong. Can you prove the opposite? I mean, even this one, I need to prove the opposite. Can you prove the opposite? I mean, do you see the challenge? I am in the corner. He believed whatever the prophet said, and now he challenged me. Can you prove the opposite? Eh, what I would say. How are you there, my friend? I know what happened to this guy. Let me hang up on him. I am a Muslim, and I would like to challenge you. All right, different one, different customer. <clears throat> Maybe this one will do better. It says he is unavailable. Hello? 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 Are you there? What happened to the Abdul? Are you there? Okay, well, fix your microphone, my friend. I don't know, I hear nothing. Look like all the Abdul are calling me, their microphone is not working no more. Who is a Muhammad and he can help Muhammad give him a hand? Maybe you can find a solution. Hello? Hello? Okay, I don't hear anything. I uh, don't hear you. Fix your mic. Any Mohammedan? Maybe Allah, he don't want the Mohammedan uh, to defend Muhammad. Because as you know, everything happened by the will of Allah. Everything happened according to Muhammadan by the help of Allah or by the order and the command of Allah. So if you could not talk to me, well, maybe Allah doesn't want you to talk to me, my friend, what we can do about it. Let us see now. Hello? Hello? Okay, well, if you call me one more time and you don't answer, I'm going to block you. Fix your microphone before you call me a second time. Go to the audio and check. Do we have any Muhammadan here who would like to answer us why Allah and his prophet do not know best? And why they are lying about where the sun set? And why they are giving us a false information, proving that Muhammad is a false fabricated prophet. I do not now need to study the whole Quran or to study anything. That's it. This is alone is enough to prove that Muhammad is a fraud. It's in front of you. Who can deny it? Any Muhammadan can deny it? Can you ask me a question? Ibrahim, you can ask me a question, but now this is not the time for a question, it's time for answers. My friend, we have a topic. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to tell us how in the world you believe in such a madness? Remember today we showed you two things. 
Muhammad, he says, anything is forbidden for you, there's no cure in it. And this is a proving that Muhammad is a fraud because we knew that a pig is a big help for mankind and help in a cure specifically. Cure your injury, cure your wound, a cure for your diabetes. Uh, I mean, it's not totally, I mean, cure, but it's uh, make you survive, actually. And somehow it's a cure because you take the insulin and, uh, you know, that will make you live. It's a cure at the moment, but not full cure, but still. Muhammad, he made it clear, anything is forbidden for you. Anything is forbidden. It has no cure in it. So when Allah, he forbid the pork, why he forbid it? You know, usually we ask the Muslims, what is the reason for forbidding the pork? They don't have no answer. They don't know. But when Muhammad, he come with this, and he claimed that anything is forbidden, there's no cure in it. And then we find that every single human being of us has a benefit of pork. Actually, Muslims do not know, maybe, that even when you eat chocolate, you are eating pork. They have to add pork there. Now we know they put for you halal in this garbage, you know, but it's not halal. You know, in the in the West, now they learn, and in Asia, they knew that the Muslim will not buy it unless we say it's halal. Uh, I remember once I saw a shoe. It says halal shoe. I mean, are you going to eat the shoe? What do you mean halal shoe? Even even a shoe have a have a have a sticker. It says halal. Halal shoe. Halal sardine. I mean, this is sardine. What do you mean halal sardine? Obviously, the one who is putting the sticker of halal, you do not know what halal mean. And the one who's buying it, you do not know what halal mean too. And both are stupid. And for me, I would never buy, by the way, something that says halal. I will never, ever buy it. Because this is against the Bible. It is, you are eating something made under the name of false god. So it's forbidden for a Christian or a Jew to eat halal food. For it is given under the name of false god. But we can have halal fun, by the way, like breastfeeding for adult, you know? That is halal. Do we have any Muhammadan? Anyone? Too bad we got two Muhammadan, but both of them, their microphone is not working. I'm not sure why. The other guy is totally gone now. I think he hung up. You see, he claimed that he cannot, you know, he, hello, but he disappeared totally from uh, Skype. He exit. No, it's totally exit, the first one. Any Muhammadan can explain to us why Muhammad is making a stupid statement? So all those lecturers by the sheikhs, the knowledge of Allah, the amazing knowledge of Allah, the scientific discovery in the Quran, we, we, the second we start checking them one by one, we will find that they are absolutely false. Let us see now he is calling, let's see if it's working. Hello? Hello? Okay, my friend, your microphone is not working. What I would do? It's my lucky day. I checked my from my side. It's working fine. And I spoke to the one before you. Do we have any Muhammadan? He have anything to say? How God can be God, yet he can be stupid? That's a very simple challenge. How God can be God, and yet he is stupid. What say you? Have you ever heard of a stupid God? Have you ever heard of a prophet he claimed that his God is the one who taught him, 
And then we see this and this, and not to mention tons of stupid things, and we are showing nothing yet. Not to forget to mention that the Quran make it clear that the earth is flat. That's why the Muslim, they have to pray in the direction of the Kaaba. Uh, let us see one more time. If you don't talk, this time I'm going to block him. Hello? Yes, now I hear you. Go ahead. Talk. Uh, come on. Just give me a break. I just blocked you. Don't try. Because I gave you a chance once, you know, we will not spend the day uh, just saying hello. Do you hear me? That's not right. Do we have any Mohammedan? <coughs> Somebody is speaking about the Joshua, uh, Joshua Chen, 10, about the sun stand still. Hey, my friend, this is not about the movement of the sun. This is about miraculous event, which means time froze. It can be literally, which means physically. And this is how it's appeared to them. In other way, is it possible that God, he make the sun still, which means the earth is not moving? Or in other way, you know, the one who created the whole world, can't he make a miracle? As an example, when uh, when Jesus was on the cross, what happened to the sky? What happened to the to the sun? The sun disappeared. So you are talking about a miracle. This is not about the daily thing happening and not how the sun behave. But can God freeze time? Can God make us even go out of time? So your, your argument is not an argument. This is about a miracle, not about how the sun function. Do we have any Mohammedan would like to say anything? The first two, Abdul, they have a flat tire. Any Mohammedan? Who is a Mohammedan who don't have a flat tire yet? <clears throat> he is willing to call us and fix the errors of his prophet. Because listen, your prophet now at risk of being labeled as, as a liar. Because here we cannot say Muhammad is a fool only. You see, Muhammad is here is being a liar because he is a claiming that he knew. And he claimed that he received this knowledge from his God. So this is not about, okay, maybe he is, you know, he's a human like everybody. I, I, he thought, he thought this is how the sun function. Okay, I understand. I mean, this is 1400 years ago. Uh, he thought, I can let it go. But this guy, he claimed to be a prophet and he claimed that he is explaining the Quran and the Muhammadan, they claim that nobody knows about Islam better than the prophet. And he received his knowledge, all of it, especially about the religion from Allah. So no error. Any Mohammedan? <clears throat> I'm really disappointed. I thought that the sun goes under the throne of my grandfather. You know, the sun. And by the way, uh, is that is this hadith contradiction for the hadith? The one that say that sun go in the water? No. Why? Let me show you why. Let us open more pages of hadith. Give me a second. Because you might say, okay, here it says under the throne of Allah. So is it under the throne of Allah or it is under or under in the, the water? It's the same. Because Allah's throne is above the water. So when Muhammad he says the sun goes under the throne of Allah, still he is saying it is goes, it goes under the water. 
Where is Allah throne located? Is over the water. Where is the sun goes? Under the throne. Do you see it? Do you see how we connect the things together? So you have to connect all those things together. So now we understand, now we have a full image of where the sun is going. So the sun is going under the throne of Allah, but the throne of Allah itself, it's made from wood, so it's normal, you know, come on, you know? I mean, come on, hold, hold on. See, so this is the water. I know many of you are ignorant. You did not know how water looked like, especially if you live in Indonesia, you never saw water. I mean, because Indonesia in the desert, as you know, you know, next to Brazil. So like if you are in Indonesia and you never saw water like me, you know, I'm an Arab, we have a lot of water in Arabia. Unbelievable. I mean, in Arabia, water is everywhere. Unbelievable. You know, this is why we swim like a fish. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so this is water. Huh? If you are Indonesian, you never saw water before. You will see the, like, the water is like waves sometimes, especially if you're like a, gran you know, a grandmother, she's swimming, or your mother-in-law and she farted. Then you will have tsunami, you know? This called tsunami, you know, because she have a big one, boom, you know, tsunami. Ooh, ooh, the waves coming. So now we have the water. And the throne of Allah is where is above the water. Alhamdulillah. This is the throne of Allah. Now, if you are from Indonesia, don't be upset. I'm, I'm joking, okay? Those people, they will take it seriously, you know? Believable. I mean, I'm telling you, people, they take things what I say seriously. You know, once I told them that I was the smartest one in the school, they believe it. Can you believe this? When the fact I was the only student in the school because all the teacher and the student, they run away. So listen what happened now. This is the throne of Allah. Hmm? Above the water. And now the throne, by the way, is shaking. You might see the picture is moving, you know, from your side. I'm not sure if you see that. Uh, and that because of the waves, you know, the, the throne is made from wood. Allah, he wrote the name of Muhammad all over. Allah is so crazy about Muhammad. The, he made the throne, he started writing. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha Muhammad Rasulullah. All over. I mean, it's a lot of graffiti on the throne of Allah. Actually, we can say that Allah, he made this a throne for a graffiti purpose. Hey, he loves graffiti, what you can say. I hope the police will not arrest him for doing graffiti in, in, in legal location. So anyway, so Allah, he made the throne over, he put the throne over the water and the water is moving and your mother-in-law is farting and tsunami is happening and the Sheikh Allah, you know, and then now the, the sun is going to go down under the throne of Allah. So the, th the sun goes from this direction let us show you how the sun moves. Because those people in Indonesia and Malaysia, they never saw the sun moving in the water. They don't have water, how they can see it. <laughs> so we have to explain to them. So this is the sun. Oh, let us make it, uh, uh, I don't know how the sun will look like in Indonesia because I think you have too much uh, uh, pollution, pollution, pollution in China, coming from China. Yeah, you have too much pollution, pollution. I mean, how in the world I'm going to make it appear? This is the sun is, but this is the sun in China, it's not yellow. It's going to look dirty. You know, there's a lot of pollution. Uh, okay, this is the sun in China. It looks like, you know, like orange something because too much dirt in the, in the air. And, you know, Chinese making barbecue. And, you know, Chinese, they make barbecue from everything. So this is the sun, you know. And now the sun will go under Allah's throne. So... The sun, by the way, will not dare to go under Allah's throne from his back because this is will be like stabbing. So the sun, brother, will go like this. Go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, go uh, down, go down, go down, go down, go down, and then go and swim, dive in, dive in. And now she is under Allah's throne here. Alhamdulillah. And then the sun... In the morning, she asked Allah for permission to go back. So what does the sun do? She go from here, after Allah give her permission, she go here, here, she go up in the water, on top of water, and then she go, and we see it again coming up in China, next to Brazil. 
And this is the interpretation of the Quran, brother. And this is the knowledge of Allah. Who can beat that? I mean, seriously, who can beat the knowledge of Allah? And the Muslim, they have millions of videos speaking about how knowledgeable is Allah. Are you kidding me? He is so knowledgeable. Any Abdul? And by the way, in case you are wondering how come I'm so skilled in, in drawing, I was born as an artist. You know, like my mother, she told me that uh, the woman she was helping in the delivery, uh, when she got her hand out, she found in her hand a tattoo. I draw something in her hand. All right? So just to let you know, like this is, this is something that, like I'm, I'm gifted. You are not. I'm sorry for you. Don't be jealous. Do we have any Muhammad that can explain to us the stupidity? This is the God you are so proud of, and this is his prophet, and this is how the sun moves, and Allah thrown over the water, and Allah's sun goes in the murky, muddy spring of water. What the heck is that, man? Don't you think this is too much knowledge for someone who goes in the college? Hmm? Hello? Any Mohammedan? And now the Mohammedan, they will call me and they will challenge me about the Trinity. Christian Prince, Christian Prince. I challenge you to tell me one verse in the Quran. He said that Jesus said, peace upon him. He said, I am God, worship me. Zach and Naik, we are talking about this uh, poo, poo here. Prince and Prince, don't say the topic. I trained you. I trained you to find me one verse in the Bible. He said that Jesus said, peace upon him. He said that I am God, worship me. Zach and Naik, what about we answer this one? And then we can go to the Bible and see if Jesus says, worship me or not. Can we finish this one? First of all, Prince and Prince, I don't swim. Yeah. I'm not asking you to swim. In order for me to refute you, I have to dive in the water and search for the sun and find if the sun is there or not. And then I can prove it for you. And because now I cannot swim, so I can prove it for you. So now let us move to the second topic. Zach and I, you cannot do that. You can hire somebody who swim. I don't care. You know, buy a GoPro uh, camera. It's a waterproof, not like your God, he get wet. And then go under the water and dive and find me where the sun set and the Allah thrown in the water. And by the way, how the sun goes in the water and the sun does not go off? Christian Prince, the sun is very hot. And if you put something like made from steel and you heat it very much, if you put it in the water and you take it off, it's still, it's still hot. Uh, so don't you think the sun is cooling down by doing that every day? Exactly. And this is why you say in Indonesia, a lot of volcano. Uh -huh. Volcano is because of the sun goes in the water. Exactly. Don't you see how the water is boiling? That's deep. I never thought about this. Any Mohammedan? Let me take this uh, image from the screen before people take it and sell it in eBay. I mean, you can't trust people these days, you know, especially when you provide such an amazing artistic art, you know, like pff, unbelievable. And, and by the way, I'm very humble. They just take me, you know, that, just take it from me. I'm, I'm not like exaggerating about how good I am or, and no, but you know, like I'm uh, just, we have to be serious sometime. You know, we have to be, we have to be real. Do we have any Muslim can explain to us this garbage? The sun. <laughs> and you know, uh, once they ask Muhammad another question, let me find the hadith, hold on. Oh, we have somebody is texting me, let us see. Why somebody, his name is Julian, is texting me. Are you a Muslim or not? You Julian, and you are a Muslim, you are not a Muslim. I will block you. Unbelievable. Let us see different hadith. Uh, <clears throat> they asked Muhammad, what, what was there before, <laughs> before Allah created his creation? 
what was there before Allah created his creation? I mean, look at the question. Uh, guys, uh, 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 this is different hadith. Let's show you this one first. And this is what drive you crazy. Somebody asked Master of Allah, he says, where was our Lord before he created his creation? <laughs> Muhammad, he said, he was above the cloud, below which was air, and above was air and water. <laughs> Anyone can solve this puzzle for me? How there is no creation yet, before he created his creation. So look what Muhammad he just did. Muhammad he claimed that water and air and cloud are not the creation of Allah. Is that correct? Read it. What was the question? Where was our Lord before he created his creation? Very simple. Okay, before he created his creation, where he was? <laughs> and again, Allah, his throne is above the water. And you know, you notice here, Muhammad, he is getting the influence, some influence from the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, when God, he created the earth and the, uh, the heaven, he created the earth and the earth, the earth was covered by what? By water, right? And what was above? The water, the Spirit of God. So Muhammad the fool, he is trying to copy the Jews. But the Jews' story is not like that and doesn't make any, any, I mean, how in the world you come with this? This is what happened when you get a fool trying to copy somebody else. He steal the story, and he add some spice to it, so to make it look like it's not his story. I mean, I'm not making. I mean, I'm not stealing your story, okay? And Muhammad always he's afraid to get busted by the Jews. If you remember, uh, Muhammad uh, once he was praying in a funeral. A Jewish walked by, and he said to Muhammad, this is how we do it. The guy, he said nothing. He did not say you are wrong. He did not say you are right. He said, this is how we do it. How we do what? How we do the pray over a dead person. The Messenger of Allah, S-A-W-S, -S, this is like CIA, something like that at that time, you know, a KGB, you know, Hitler intelligence, used to stand off in a funeral, until the crops was placed on the grave. Here you notice it says learned Jews. You see the word learned Jews? What learned Jews mean? Anyone knows what, what does that mean? What learned Jews? What do you get from that? When you say when you see the word says learned Jew, what learned Jew mean? A rabbi. A rabbi. Okay. He passed by and he said, this is how we do it. What Muhammad he said? Sit down, sit down, act differently. Like what the heck? If Muhammad was a prophet of God and he was praying all those years in a certain way, how come Allah did not tell him not to pray like the Jews? So obviously he is copying the Jews. And now when the Jew, he said to him, this is how we do it. Muhammad, he said, oh, oh, they got me busted. In a second, in the speed of light, Muhammad, he says, sit down, sit down, act differently. 
You know, if Muhammad was eating food by his mouth, and a Jew, he walked by, and he said to him, this is how we do it. Muhammad will stop using his mouth, and he will talk, or he will eat from his anus. He will say, sit down, sit down, act differently. Like, what the heck? What, so what a big deal if the Jew, he says to you, this is how we do it. Don't you Muslim claim that you are following Moses? Why Muhammad, he felt that this is bad because he is a fraud. And how you can change a prayer? Where you, the prayer he, Muhammad, now he changed. Just because of a Jew, he says, this is how we do it. Did he receive order from Allah to change it? How fast? And how come Allah never told him this is the wrong way to pray? And does that mean that Muhammad was just making up a prayer, just following how the Jews they pray. This is how we do it. Any Muhammadan? This is how we do it. Sit down, sit down, act differently. What if a Jew entered the bedroom? of Muhammad, and Muhammad was having sex with his wife. And then the Jew, he said to him, this is how we do it. What Muhammad will do? He will say to her, sit down, sit down, act differently. I'm not going to use the F word, you know what I mean. F differently, like what the heck? What do you think about Zachary Naik saying masturbation is permissible? I mean, come on, from all this garbage religion, all what you worry about is a, is, a, is, a, uh, is a masturbation. I mean, they have sex with the children. They have fatwas about having sex with the, co with the goat, uh, uh, having sex with the statues, having sex with the water mineral. And now you are worried about masturbation? Hmm. Come on, think differently. <laughs> Those people they have fatwa about how to have sex with the water minon. Even water minon is not safe in their hand. And you are worried about Zach and Nag saying it is okay to have masturbation. The man is being re realistic. But you know the prophet he says, Mal'oonun nakihu yadu. The Muslim they say the word nakahameen. Marriage, right? But here the hadith says, Allah cursed the one who do nikah to his hand. So how you can marry your hand? <laughs> Solve this issue again. Okay, okay. Sit down, sit down, act differently. My Skype, nobody texts me. They act differently today. They are so scared to answer me. La 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 ba 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 la 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 hmm. Eliza, Eliza, you see, we do not say that this is science in the Bible. We say this is a miracle. Hmm. As an example, just to show you how stupid you are. You, Muhammad, and you say that Jesus is born from Mary and he have no father. Is that science? No. What do you say? You say this is a miracle, brother. So how come you say it's a miracle? We cannot say it's a miracle. You are stupid. No wonder the prophet, he says, they have half a brain. You see the stupidity? Have you ever heard of a Muslim making fun of the Christians, believing that Jesus is born of a virgin? No, they don't. Why? Because the Quran says so. Just because the Quran says so. But this is against science. So how we believe in it? Believe it's a miracle. This is why it's amazing. Because if it is something everybody can do, everybody can have, well, there's no point then. It's not same, everybody. So here you see the stupidity of the Muhammad. When they ask about the Bible, we say this was God miracle. This is not how the sun move. Do we have any Muhammad then? Would like to say anything for us? Besides, sit down, sit down, act differently. Hmm?
يعني محمدا You change the way you pray just because of a Jew, he said, this is how we do it. So if the Jew, he says, this is not how we do it, you will keep it? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, by the way, um, in case you do not know, I prophesy many things and they come true. As an example, it's going to rain in the winter. Is going to get hot in the summer and the sun is in the sky and uh, Donald Trump is playing golf. How I know that? How? Hmm? Hey, Eliza, no, no, you see, you are, you are being hypocrite. Uh, look what you just said. In the story in the Bible, in the, in the book of Joshua, it was a miracle happened only once. It doesn't happen every day. This is not how the sun moves every day. And you know, I have a challenge for you. Eliza, do you like to call me? Because I want to show you something. And then right away, you will start vomiting. And I will use the same text you have in the screen. What do you think? What do you think? Do you dare? You don't. <clears throat> you know, Muhammadan, they have no idea what is the religion teach. They are just, you know, uh, they defend blindly. They do not know even what they are defending. I never saw really a Muslim, he knows what he's defending. They don't know what they are defending. What do you think? You are the one who is complaining about Joshua, right? What if I show you the story of Joshua in your stupid book? Is that fair, guys? What if I show you the story of Joshua in your stupid book? Then in a second, you will never mention this statement again. Do you see how amazing the stupidity of this religion? Do you dare to call me and I will make you read the same story you are complaining about <laughs> in the book of Joshua in your book? <laughs> Stupidity is amazing, brother and sister. Unbelievable. <laughs> Who is a Muslim wanna call me and he wanna laugh at the book of Joshua? How God he froze the sun. Who is the brave one? Now they will go in the mule mood. <laughs> I don't hear. I do not know. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, oh, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, I love the Chinese when they said he left as a donkey, never come back as a horse. So do you want to call me Eliza and make fun of the Bible? Huh? So we can laugh at you, and we laugh at your God, and we laugh at Ibn Kathir, and we laugh at Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, and we laugh at your Prophet, and we laugh at the Quran? Hmm? Hmm. Any Abdul? You are talking to Christian Prince, remember that. I have all your laundry. All your laundry is here.
يعني عبدول اه لورد هاف ميرسي You cannot make a horse a donkey and you cannot make a donkey a horse. I mean, don't even try. Any Mohammedan? Today it's very dry. I don't know where is the Mohammedan. What happened? أني محمدا Very quiet. Even Eliza is quiet now. She will not mention it no more. I cannot, I won't call you until you are muharram for me. Okay, let me do breastfeeding for you. <laughs> Guys, look what she said. Look what she said. This, this, this girl, she wants to do something to me. Look, what the heck is that? Okay, she is saying to me, I cannot call you until you are muharram. So now she is saying she have to give me her boobs and I have to drink from them 10 times even if there is no milk. I cannot call you sorry because my voice is a voice of a vagina. In Islam, women don't talk from their mouth. They use their vagina. This is why it's unlawful for me to talk to you. That's deep. But are you talking to me now by the text? What the heck? <laughs> suckle me baby by the way I'm going to open a drive through a suckle me drive through in Las Vegas if you'd like to support this project let me know I'm thinking to open like a gas station in Las Vegas and but it's not a gas station no no it's not there's no gas there's nipples you know I will call it nippeline it's going to be the first in the world and then we open a franchise around the world so women uh, Muslim you have to be Muslims they put their breast, as the prophet said, that will open a hole, you know, so only two boobs coming out, and you drive your car, and you stop, like you put your credit card, you, you know, we will put the machine, the credit machine, between the boobs. You slide your credit card between the boobs, you know, and then you start suckling, and the boobs will come out right away. And you have to do it 10 different times, and then you can open, you can go to the casino. Alhamdulillah. Hey, Eliza, as long as you are talking about Muharram, what is the scientific purpose of a woman giving her breast to a stranger to suckle her 10 times? Can you tell us? What will do exactly to the man? I mean, imagine there is a man, you give him your breast and you tell him, honey, you have to suckle me 10 times. Okay, my voice, this, I cannot make my voice a voice of a woman, sorry. I can make it a voice of Zachary Naik. Hold on. Breath and breath. Me, myself. By the time I met my wife. I did not talk to her because in Islam we are forbidden to talk to her. So Zaka, what you did? She gave me a nipple. What the heck? So you did not shake hand with her? Exactly. I only shake her nipple. So she put her mouth. I put my mouth in her nipple, and I start suckling. Uh, Zaka, but how old are you when you did that? I was twenty-seven. But what? Twenty-seven. Okay, stop spitting, man. So you were twenty-seven, and your wife she gave you her nipple before even you shake hand with her before you marry her. Exactly, because now we can sit together or we can drink coffee. What the heck? So you cannot drink coffee with Muslim women unless you suckle her nipples? Prince and Prince, Islam is all knowing and Allah is all knowing. And Allah, he knew what in the heart of people. So he told us that in your heart there is a dirty heart. So if you suckle her, the dirty thing would go. Mm -hmm. So now if a man, he suckle women, he will not think dirty about her? Are you sure? Prince and Prince, I'm very sure. 
Hey, okay, where is your wife now? Return Prince. If you touch my wife, I'm going to kill you. What the heck? I thought this is a requirement to talk to her. I have to suck at her. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> Somebody saying to me, show the contradiction in the Quran. My friend, there's no need to show the con I mean, all of this is a contradiction. What the heck is that? <laughs> I thought the prayer is coming from Allah. It turned to be it's coming from the Jews. We thought the fasting is coming from Allah. It turned to be it's coming from the Jews. We thought that the, the, the abolition is coming from Allah. It turned to be it's coming from the Sabian. I mean, everything they have is coming from somewhere. The black stone is coming from the Arab pagan before Muhammad. And by the way. I love the black stone. I love the black stone. If you remember once I went to a Muslim website, I think it's called Convert to Islam something, they have a chat. So I asked them live on air when I'm talking to you, I said to them, I have a question. Why the prophet, he kissed the black stone? The Abdul on the other side, he, he was thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. And after all the thinking, he answered me saying, because it's holy. Uh, uh. And then I ask him, and why it's holy? And then he started thinking again. It took him five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, ten minutes. And then he asked me back. He says, because the prophet kissed it. <laughs> <laughs> so why Allah prophet he kissed the black stone? Because it's holy. Okay, why it's holy? Because the prophet kissed it. Like what the heck? Who can beat the intelligence of Islam? Nobody. Nobody. You know the song that says nobody knows? Nobody knows, nobody knows, nobody knows, nobody. Bum, bum, bum. Nobody. Even the nose of Allah is different. You know, uh, talking about nose, just to show you that Muhammad is really scientifically accurate. Do you know that shaitan, he's sleeping in your nose? And he pee in your ears. Actually, we have it every day when we go live on air into introduction. If you go here, you will see the Sheikh is teaching us the wisdom of Allah. I mean, Muhammad, how Muhammad he knew this? Come on, my friend, this is unseen. Even a camera with the like with a special uh, uh, like dictation, uh, dictation for uh, heat or whatever, heat. You know, even those they cannot uh, find out those things. So you will see here the Sheikh here is telling you. The knowledge. Look, let us receive the knowledge together. Are you ready? Are you sincerely ready? There's a hadith Muhammad he said to the Muslims. Are you sincerely ready to go to, to, to heaven? They said, Yes, Prophet. He said, Are you sincerely ready to go to heaven? They said, Yes, Prophet. He said, Are you sincerely ready to go to heaven? The Muslim gets so excited, they said, Yes, Prophet. He said, Are you sincerely ready to go to heaven? The Muslim gets so excited, they said, Yes, 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 Prophet, we are. And then he said, Say, inshallah. Like, what the heck? The guys, they thought the bus is in the corner. They are going now. I mean, the guy, he keeps saying, are you sincerely ready to go to heaven? The Muslim, he say yes. Are you sincerely ready to go to heaven? Yes. Are you sincerely ready to go to heaven? Yes, 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 yes. Are you sincerely ready to go to heaven? Like, yes, like, yes, 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 yes. And then he said, say, inshallah. What the heck? Now, let us listen to the fool and learn from the Abdul. <laughs> oh boy. Oh buddy. I mean, look at this guy in the, this guy Borat, Borat. he looked like a Borat. I mean, do you look at do you, do you do you see how how he turned to be ugly? This guy, I don't look at this film. You know what? I think. Anyway, I don't want to make fun of him. Uh, he's making fun of himself. Anyway, you know, uh, they made an interview with him. They says, uh, uh, so the disciple after the death of Jesus, crucifixion of Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus appeared to them. He said, definitely, definitely, they saw something appearing to them. You idiot! How come you say? You don't believe. And then you say definitely something appeared to them. I mean, you see the stupidity? <laughs> Let us go here. Let us learn something useful for your life. I don't want you to go now. 
and you know like you go to your bedroom or your kitchen or whatever you want to do in your life and you learn nothing i want to teach you something very special very very special something will make you remember forever all of you now are curious what is that what is something very serious very important and something you are going to remember forever I am sure you are excited. And you have the reason. Because what I'm going to show you, the prophet said. And as you know, oops, I cannot find it. <laughs> I mean, we made people so excited to see it. And now we cannot find it in English. Let me, let me, let me, uh, let me find another hadith. Don't be disappointed. No, we will find it. We will find it. Uh, here we go. The Messenger of Allah, he said, Guys, I will not let you go home without learning something very useful. The Messenger of Allah, he said, When one of you, he pee, he should empty his penis three times. The translation is absolutely stupid. The translation is false. He says you have to shake your penis three times. Let us go and see the previous hadith. <laughs> All right. Uh... The Eve in chain, brother. This hadith is the Eve in chain. The Prophet, he said, when any of you urinates, let him squeeze his penis three times. Doesn't say squeeze. It says you have to shake it. فَلْيَنْتُرْ ذَكَرَهُ ثَلَاثُ مرات. Muslims, why three times will make your penis Perfect. What about we shake it for time? Isn't it, this is going to be more sure? <laughs> I mean, this prophet, he is intact of everything. Imam is here, a guy he claimed to be an imam, let us say. <clears throat> this guy he claimed to be an imam. We will see. I think he's a joker, maybe. I'm calling him. Hello? 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 Uh, Aisha. Uh, Aisha. This is ultimate fort. <laughs> Saying the F word. <laughs> ultimate fort. Did you clean the wall behind you? Now I understand why it's so dirty. I mean, the guy who opened the camera for me, I could not believe it, how dirty the wall behind him. And this is explained by the prophet. The prophet, after he played with his penis, he used to dry his hands on the wall. Who is a Muslim will say I'm lying? Hmm? Who is a Muslim will say I'm lying? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's your fault, uh, ultimate fault. It's not my. It's not me who asked you to open the camera. Actually, I don't like people to open the camera for me. But you, stupid, you open the camera. And why you do that? And then you get upset. Well, I'm, I, I saw. Uh, you know, I saw a wall, really disgusting, full of poopoo. And you claim you are a person who want to defend Islam. So didn't you clean your wall before? You talk to me. Hmm? So look what Muhammad he used to do when he want to clean himself. He 
dry his hands on the wall. You can imagine what the prophet he have in his bedroom. A bika saw a piece of art map. And this is Sahih al Bukhari. Do you see it? People, do you see it? But think about it. Imagine you have a husband, and your husband, after he played with his penis, and this is exactly what he was doing, by the way, he was using his penis. You know? This is after he have sex with Maimuna. He after have sex with Maimuna. Hmm? Then he rubbed his hands on the wall. This hadith is da'if. This is Sahih Bukhari. How this can be da'if? It's a Bukhari. I mean, who call what, who care what Fifi and Mimi say? Come on, my friend. <laughs> they can say, I, I, and if it is da'if, why it's there? <laughs> the name of the book is Sahih al Bukhari, which means authentic Bukhari. And then they say to us, it's not authentic. So it is in the authentic of al Bukhari, but it's not authentic. Boom, wow, wow. Listen, all women, you should marry a prophet like Muhammad. The guy, he will use the wall. We have a guy, he is saying, I challenge you. Let us see this guy. Until now, we got nothing except kids, you know, sadly. Uh, as M available, he declined. I called him, he challenged me. His name is Raza. I called him. He said, I challenge you. I called him, he declined. Like, what the heck? Let us call him again. Maybe Raza, he can do better. <clears throat> Hmm, let us see. Hello? Ultimate fart? Hello? 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 Okay, take a hike. It's not talking. Do we have any Mohammedan before we go? Because I need to go and need to do intercourse. And I need to find a wall. Because as you see, if there is no wall, my hands will stay wet. Alhamdulillah. And they say to us, the Prophet is the best example. Of what? Of cleaning and cleansing. And then we find not only that, the Prophet, when he washed, like now you see, it says he wash, But how he wash? He wash in water full of dead dogs and women of blood from period and garbage. And the reference in front of your eyes. Isn't it obvious that this man is mentally ill? Why in the world anyone will jump in little jacuzzi? It's not a running water as Muslims they try to, you know, this is actually, this is why, this is why people, they throw garbage in it because it is, it is, there is no, actually, this is not even a well. This is used to be a well. And the water is coming from the houses. All the town, the houses, water run out of the house. There's no sewage at that time. They make a hole. Women, they wash their dishes behind the door and they have a little hole under the door. And this is ex exists until now in the villages in the Middle East. And then the water run all down the down point of the road or whatever it is. And this is where they, they throw their garbage because simply there's no water to drink from there. It's dirt. It's just garbage. You know, remember, this is desert. Nobody will throw their dogs in the water they drink from because it's not always. I mean, the whole town will have only one well if they, if they got lucky. So why in the world someone, he claimed to be a messenger of God, he do such a thing? Anyone can tell me? I need to translate my book into Arabic? Well, I don't need to do the Arabic thing because there is many 
many exposing Islam in Arabic, actually, you know. Islam is, you know, Islam is, between the Arab, Islam is dead. Islam is still maybe have little uh, uh, breathing in those who do not know Arabic, like in Indonesia. You see Indonesian women, they wear hijab in a very hot country. Go in the Middle East and see Muslim women drinking whiskey and wearing short and go and see the nightclubs in Saudi Arabia and nobody will cover his, 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 his face or his head. But you will see Muslim women in the Philippines wearing hijab. Why? Because they are ignorant, they do not know what Islam is. Islam can survive as long as you are ignorant. The second you learn what Islam, how stupid it is, you will leave. And look, when they ask Muhammad about his stupid behavior, why he is performing wudu, which means ablution. I mean, what is the purpose of ablution? It's called ablution. So what is the purpose? To become a, like a cleaner. To be ready to pray. So how the stupid man, he told them that if a woman, she had menstruation, she can't pray because she is not clean. And then he himself, he jumped. In a water, have the dogs. Muhammad, he said, if a dog, he touched your dish, you have to wash it seven times. And the last time you wash, it, you wash it with dirt. This is how supposedly, how dirty the dog is. Seven times. And then the guy, not only he is touching the dogs, he is showering, washing, putting, you know, ablution, you have to put water in your nose. Do you know that? So water coming inside his nose and inside his mouth, have bodies of dogs, administration, and garbage. <clears throat> and this is the knowledge of Allah. Sadly, today we don't have any serious Abdul to call us and to join us. They are all potatoes. Before even we touch them. Did we have a good time? I think this is enough for today. I hope we have a great time together and we learn something. And as you see, the knowledge of Allah is a shish kebab, is a hummus. This guy, Muhammad, is a fraud. Everything he says is stupid. And the Muslim. If they attack your belief, they depend in how ignorant you are about their belief and your belief. You know what I mean? The Bible speaks clearly about my people destroyed because of their ignorance. So this is why we are here. We are fighting ignorance. And all of us, we are ignorant in something or many things. If I write a letter in English, I will make too many mistakes. You will laugh maybe. You will say, look at this, you know? But uh, this is English. I'm not born in this country. I don't, I did not, uh, you know, it's not my, uh, my field. We have ignorance. But there's ignorance can destroy us. There's ignorance, there's a kind of ignorance can really destroy your soul, can take you to hell. And that's why we are here. We are not here to make fun of Muhammad. He is so stupid, yes. He is lovable. Is an idiot, but the purpose is you and your children's, so nobody can fool you and fool them. Your kids will go to school, they will sit with Muslims, and Muslims they are trained to attack Christianity, and your kids they have no idea. So, I hope I'm doing what the churches are not doing. Sadly, our churches they became a place of ritual no education, no teaching, no answer, no refutation. We have a guy who gets salary. You pay him, you get a nice house, nice car. People pay him respect, they invite him for a free barbecue. And his job is to read for you. Today we open John chapter two. Next week, John chapter three. But they never teach you anything how to refute people. So we are doing what our churches should do. All right? Uh, It's important to go to church, it's important to pray, it's important to join the Christians in their activities, but it's more important to know who is you worshiping and to know how to refute the enemy of Christ. Because the enemy of Christ, they will come to you in the clothes of a sheep. But in fact, they are wolves. So if you do not know this fact, obviously you are exposing your children and yourself to the wolves. And you have no weapon to fight. Here we arm you with weapon, 
peaceful weapon. We don't kill, we don't teach violence, and we don't preach hate. In fact, we are always, as we say, you should love the Muslims. Jesus says, love your enemy. But loving the Muslim does not mean give them hugs, as some silly Christians they think. Loving somebody is by facing him or her with the truth. If he is doing something stupid, you say to him, this is stupid. If your son taking drugs, you don't say to him, I love you, I give you a hug. You shout at him, so he will wake up. So loving people have nothing to do with some Christians trying to make it look like. Loving people is to tell them the truth that if they don't follow Jesus, they go to hell. This is how you love, you love people. We are worried about you. We want to save you. Muhammad is a devil himself. We will not follow the God of penis. We will not bow down to the penis God. We will not follow a sexual God. Uh, somebody saying, I understand that you need to debate various topics in order to create content for the channel, but what uh, would you do consider the best contradiction? My friend, I have my books. They have tons of contradiction about the Quran. And we do not need to give you all contradiction in the Quran. Uh, but you can open a topic for me about something. I will, I, will, I will answer. But one contradiction is enough to prove the Quran is false. And who is the one who put the rule? Allah. Allah, he says, if this is a book made by other than him, supposedly, which means not God, you will find a contradiction. But the whole Quran is a contradiction. So it's not important, really, uh, 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 what exactly the topic? The important is the topic itself, not what topic. Uh, there's many on topic. The topic itself, if the topic is proven to us that Islam is false, then all other topic is not necessarily, at least for the moment. And as you see, all the topic we mentioned today is proven that Muhammad is not a prophet. Everything he said. Muhammad, he claimed he knew where the sun goes, where the sun set. He claimed that the sun goes in the, the water of, of the throne of Allah. He claimed that the sun set in a spring of muddy water. He claimed that Zulkarnain, he built a dam between two mountains in order to forbid certain creatures who they are called Gog and Magog. And those are Asian people. This is how racist Muhammad is. So any topic, anywhere we go, any chapter in the Quran can be a good topic to expose Islam. From the first page to the last page. And actually, I'm willing to extend my stay. If a Muslim can open for me any chapter, he says, I challenge you in this chapter. I'm not going to ask you a question. Give me a chapter name and tell me I challenge you to find a mistake there. A horrible mistake. And leave the rest for me. You see, the Quran have 114 chapters. Is it possible that one chapter of them is not stupid? I guarantee you that every one of them is laughable. And that's why I'm challenging. 114 chapter, each one of them is a very extremely laughable and stupid. We are not talking about a mistake. We are talking about a laughable book. Do we have any Muslim? Any Muhammadan want to say anything? You know, and then you will find the Muslims, they come to us, and they will say, Christian Prince, can you read for us this verse in the Bible? My friend, what about what we show you now? Or is the topic, is the Bible? I'm willing to answer you about the Bible, no problem. But what, so all the garbage we said about your prophet, nothing move you? Nothing affect you? This is how they try to run away. Those people, they love to run away. Because simply Islam is an embarrassment. As simple as that. Any Muhammad?
nobody. Hmm. Well, nothing surprising. They cannot answer, they cannot defend their prophet, and their prophet is nothing but an embarrassment to their cult. And this is why you see a Muslim, he washed his hands from what his prophet said. They washed their hands from what their prophet said. All right. I want to say thank you all for being here. Uh, and I hope next time we'll get more Mohammedan. Usually we get way more, more Mohammedan, but today maybe our topic was very harsh on their skin. And you know, the Muslims are very sensitive people. And, uh, you know, they understand the religion very well. And they understand very well why their prophet, he jump in the dirty water, have dead dogs in it. Because the prophet, he loved dogs. They know, Christian Prince. The prophet don't love dogs. The prophet, he ordered to kill all dogs. And you know, just one thing before we go. I want to remind you that the black dog is the devil. Yes, brother. How the prophet, he knew that. The other day, I saw a black dog. I look at him. He look at me. I look at him. I look at, he look, I look at him. He look at me. And then I look at him again. And then he look at me again. And I look at him again. And he look at me again. And not only that, he start moving his tail. What a disgusting devil. Not only is a black dog, he is moving his tail. He's challenging me. He know that I know about Allah and he's a prophet. I mean, how the messenger of Allah, he come with such a knowledge that the black dog is the devil unless he is sent by God. And I swear by Allah, Shem, the dog look at me, I look at him. He look at me, I look at him. As if we are, like we know that we are the enemy of each other. He know that he's the devil? <laughs> he think he can, he can fool me about his, his moving tail like he's excited. He wanna like, he's happy to see me? <laughs> You're right. I'm smarter than like that. I'm a Muslim. So the prophet of Allah, he taught us that if you see a black dog, we should kill him, for he is the devil, brother. Hey, brother, if we kill the black dog, so how come the devil is still there? Oh, we have to kill all the black dog. Okay, so if we kill all the black dogs, is the devil will stay there? This is a good question. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I look at the moon, I look at the prophet, I look at the moon, I look at the prophet, I look at the moon, I look at the prophet. Conclusion, the prophet is more white than the moon. What a racist cult. I mean, it, 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 look how they try to praise their prophet, even about his skin color. I look at the prophet, I look at the moon, I look at the prophet, I look at the moon, I look at the prophet, I look at the moon. And the guy is crying. He is so much emotional. For sure you have to be emotional because you look at the prophet, you look at the moon, you look at the prophet, you look at the moon, you look at the prophet, you look at the moon, and you will not be emotional. Are you crazy? That is deep. How the messenger of Allah look like? How the messenger of Allah, he look like. Here we go. I will show you how messenger of Allah look like, brother. And I will make you cry. All of you will become so emotional. Extremely emotional. Well done. Oh boy. Let us see how many of you. Is your tissue is ready? Please get ready your tissue, because now we will tell you how the prophet looked like. It was the full moon night. <laughs> and I looked at the moon and in the desert understand 
the moon is, is an awesome sight. It is smooth. It is radiant. It is clear. It is gentle compared to the scorching sun at which they are used to. So the moon was the epitome of beauty. So he says, I came out at a full moon night and I looked at the, at the moon and I saw it beautiful, handsome. So I separated Hold on. in some... What I did, I hit my mistake there. What I did, man, I, 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 I destroyed the moment of uh, motion now. Come on, what I did. Sorry, guys, I apologize. I know many of you are crying right now. You are full of emotion now. And look, the guy, look at him. His, 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 the tears is almost coming out. It, 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 it's an act, by the way, because the more you act, the more the more donation you will receive. I look at the moon. This guy, he loved the prophet. Donate for him. Come on. Donate for this guy. Don't donate for Christian Prince. The prophet, this guy, he loved Christian uh, prophet. Christian Prince, don't love Christian the more you act, the more you money. Mm. Money is the honey. Okay, tell us, tell us what happened. I looked yeah. at the moon and yeah. in the desert understand uh -huh. the moon is, is an awesome sight. Yeah. It is smooth. Yeah. It is radiant. Uh -huh. It is clear. Wow. It is gentle compared to the scorching sun at which they are used to. So the moon was the epitome of beauty so he says i came out at a full moon night and i looked at the, at the moon and i saw it beautiful handsome so i said let me go see if the moon is more handsome or my prophet is more handsome Look. Let me go and see who is more handsome. Hold on. We have the, in one hand, we have the moon. In the other hand, we have the prophet. It's a beauty queen night. Who is going to win, you think? I'm serious. Who you think is going to win such a competition? Who is more pretty? You infidel kuffar. Do you know how sexy and you know it the prophet is? He is more sexy than the moon. Continue, Abdul. Let me see if that is more beautiful or the prophet is more beautiful. So I went and... Objection. You idiot. How even you think about it? For sure the prophet. Do we need even need to compare? I mean, this is an insult to the prophet. Shouldn't we knew that he is more beautiful? Are you insulting prophet of Allah? Why we should even compare between the two beautiful? I mean, the moon is beautiful. But the prophet, my friend, this is the prophet. How even we compare? Shame on you. I'm so disappointed. Now I'm going to dry my hands on the wall. And I saw him standing afar. So I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face. So I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked. So I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I Any one of you have a parrot? If you have a parrot, let him watch this, he will learn it. And he will move his head like woo, 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 woo. I look at the moon, I look at the prophet, I look at the moon, I look at the prophet. And oh, he said to you, oh, like he is in pain because Muhammad is so sexy. Come on. And I looked at his face and I looked at the moon the and he said, Wallahi, Wallahi, he was more handsome than the moon in its entirety. That, that is just the look of your Rasul. <sighs> I hope somebody, nobody will share this video with the gay club. Muhammad will be in trouble. Maybe he will like it. I'm not sure. What the heck is that? What? I look at the moon, I look at the prophet, I look at the moon, I look at the prophet, you know? How come those things never happen to me? You know, I go in the elevator, everybody in the elevator, they look down the ground, nobody look at me. I say good morning, 
Nobody look at me. I say good night. Nobody look at me. What the heck with those people? They are scared. Muhammad? You see Muhammad? So, so sexy. Oh, my brother. You will cry, brother, if you see how sexy he is. This is how your prophet looked like. And then they start talking, if you go from the beginning, his eyelashes, how sexy they are. How his belly bum. The white was excessively white. <laughs> and his eyelashes were long. Not like those girls these days, they put fake eyelashes. Go and date Prophet Muhammad. He have real eyelashes. I'm truly, truly sick of those women having fake eyelashes. Finally, finally we found the Prophet who have true eyelashes. They are very long. Actually, I remember once that the Prophet, he moved his eyelashes and the Quran pages, they flip because he make a lot of wind with them. Do you see how long his eyelashes? This is supposedly a religious meeting. But isn't it the Hadith says that the most handsome person in Quraysh is Dahya al-Kalbi, your donkey? So where was your Prophet then? Isn't it the hadith says that the most handsome person of Quraysh was a guy, his name is Dahil Kalbi, and the angel Jibreel, he come in his look? So we should change it, and we should make it. I look at Dahya, I look at the moon. I look at Dahya, I look at the moon. I look at Dahya, I look at the moon. <laughs> What a stupid religion, man. Sorry, guys, I have to go because my hands is wet and I need to dry them on the wall. And then I need to do ablution with water, have dead dogs and women blood from period. And they don't have dogs and they don't have women blood from period because I don't have neither of them. So I'm in trouble. I will see if I can find some in Walmart. Please be upon him. Do we have any Muslim before we leave? May they may the last call. Last call. Last call. Hello. You will not find anyone speaking about their prophet like those Muhammad. They worship him. Literally, they worship him. They worship his testicles. They have stories about how amazing his testicles, amazing his penis. By the way, his penis have two holes. That's why he wears sunglasses on them. I mean, they have. Have you ever heard people write stories like this about their prophet? His Billy Bomb. I mean, why we should care for his billy bomb? What the heck? I'm not sure how many of you now decide to convert to Islam or not, but uh, based on this, many women now, they will not marry no more. All women, they want to marry Prophet Muhammad, who have long ashes, light ashes. Uh, by the way, Muhammad, obviously, he was very ugly. Oh. Uh, Whatever they try to say about him. If you remember the story of a woman, Muhammad, he wanted to have sex with her. She said to him, How a queen like me, she gave herself to a low trash person like you. And this is written in their books. And this is why one of his wives, actually, she ran away from him with a Christian guy. Anyway, enough for today. I will try to come tomorrow. But then, uh, I am a former Salafi and I am about to launch a channel against Islam. Okay, and you are inspiring me. Welcome, Frank. Okay, my friend, good for you. You left Islam. I'm happy for you. And uh, we always support those people who they are going to expose Islam, especially ex-Muslims. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. And now I need to go and look at the moon and look at the prophet. And for sure, for sure, for sure, we knew who was going to win. I mean, why even we not go in the in the game if we know who is the winner? Huh? Actually, I believe that the prophet of Allah, he used to look like this guy. In fact, he looked like him.
if you if you zoom in the mouth, this guy he lost his his teeth. Prophet of Allah, according to the Hadith, but Qusirat Ruba'iyatahu, his front teeth are gone. So imagine how the Prophet he used to talk. Now we understand why Zak and Naik is messed up. He was trying to copy the Prophet of Allah, so he broke all his front teeth. And since then, he's spitting all over the place. Try to take off your teeth, the front ones, and see how your talk will be funny. I'm not making fun of anyone, by the way, who have lost his teeth, but I'm sure. But the question is, this guy, he delivered a message from Allah. And he have to say the word perfectly because Arabic is very confusing. I mean, even when you say them perfectly, still they are confusing. So what about a person, his, his teeth has gone? What the heck? You know? For me, I don't mind, by the way, to marry a woman, she have no teeth. This is, I can be safe, especially if she have no nails too. Like imagine if we, if we strip the women from all their weapons. No nails, no teeth, and no high heel shoes. That's it, we won the war. Just think about it. I mean, what is our weakness as men? Hmm? Take their teeth right away. Go right now. Convince your wife to take off her teeth. Tell her why we pay for insurance for your teeth, etc. Just take them off. Uh, take them off. Uh, when she take them off, she can't bite you in any fight. That's it. And then convince her to take off her nails. And then tell her to donate all her high heels shoes, which is the reason for many deaths in last 21 century, you know, even Putin is using them. So if you do those three things, brother, you are safe. Prophet Muhammad himself, he have a trouble with his wives. If you remember the Quran, when his two wives start attacking him, they were using the three objects, their teeth, their nails, and their high heel shoes. Now you understand why they make them like a nail, huh? Because they want to nail your head with it, like, you know? Bingo, you are done, like a, I like you, uh, you know, like a dead. The guy is dead. Where is your husband? Uh, next to my shoe. Where? I mean, <clears throat> where's your shoe? In the head of the husband. Anyway, so thank you very much. I'm just giving you a funny advice. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. A disclaimer. Disclaimer. I teach you. I teach you only what Allah He taught Harut and Marut. And before I teach you, I uh, tell you disclaimer that this is uh, not haram. Not uh, like what the heck the God he opened a school of Harut and Barut so the wife and the husband they can fight each other I mean have you ever heard of such a religion the God who opened a school of Harut and Marut who teach magic and what the purpose of this magic to make the wife and the husband fight ah, interesting interesting Allah was a lawyer he want customers so he was like, imagine you are a divorced lawyer and nobody's getting divorced. So what we do, we call Allah, he sent two angels. One of them, his name is Harut. And look at the names. I love the names. Look, Harut. What is the second one, his name? Marut. Like, what the heck? It's like a wolf saying something. So Allah, brother, he sent uh, teaching uh, uh, angels uh, and he sent down Harut and Marut. And what they learned from them, the means of uh, so discord so between the man and the wife. And if you would like to divorce your wife, and you do not know how to do it, I can give you a copy of Harut and Marut manual. All right? Let us say... Oh, let us say you are a female, and there is a guy, he is married. You know, Muslim women, they do that, by the way. They, mo they make ru ruqiyah. Ru you know what ruqiyah, like, uh, I don't know what the English word, like, you know, you write some words in the paper, and then you put it somewhere, and at the pillow, or in his bed, or whatever, the guy, and then supposedly he will divorce his wife, and he will marry you. So here, you do not need to do that. We can call Harut and Marut. I have the manual of the magic book, you know, the, I found the book with the ring. We can teach you how you make any husband divorce his wife so you can take him from her. But you have to pay for that, okay? It's not for free. I give my books for free, uh, yeah, but this is magic, you remember? <laughs> Come on, we can't share it for free. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Harut and Marut teaching magic to divorce. I mean, Jesus was fighting 
So people, they will have a st establish a family, love their family, stay together in their family. And Muhammad, he Allah, he sent the angels to open Harry Potter school to teach you how to divorce the wife and the husband. I'm not only to divorce, to make them fight so they end with divorce. You know? That's what I'm saying to you. You have to get rid of the nails. Remember that. Actually, if I am you, before you get married, you have to put conditions. Like, before you enter my house, you have to leave behind your teeth, your nails, and your high heels. All right? You make her sign in the court. And this is the only way you can be secure. Hmm? Just think about it. Think about it. Anyway, don't take it seriously. We are just joking. Thank you, everybody, for being here. May the Lord bless you. And this is your brother, Christian Prince, who is serving you some science and comedy of Allah teaching. Don't laugh at Allah. Otherwise, you might turn like him. I know somebody. He laughs at Christian Prince. He woke up in the morning. He looked exactly like him. What a horrible thing. Take care. But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 